Can you call yourself a software engineer? And I call myself a software engineer. Ultimately, we're gonna find an answer during this video. So sit back and relax and let's get into it. I wanted to make this a part two of the series of setting the record straight on what's the difference between a software developer and a software engineer. I think it's a huge debacle if you tell me, but what can you do but talk on a video on YouTube and debate your side of the case. Hopefully this video will silly deal on the topic and the HRs and engineers who are writing out the job titles and writing out the job description are tuning in. So what we left off was on the legality of calling yourself a software engineer. Some might think that, well, you know, meaning words don't matter, but according to the law, words do matter. And we should definitely look at that because it's gonna be some hefty fines if you don't. We're gonna look at this particular post that I found when I was doing a Google search on, can you legally call yourself a software engineer? This person asked this about three years ago. And for the most part, you know, it was a very similar situation I'm looking into as well. It's like, do software engineers have this exemption because everyone's using this word so interchangeably. How can this possibly be? I think this article finding exactly why that is all right so the first answer what I was talking about and it was just saying there's no general answer to that it's based off a of state-by-state answering that question and one of the examples that they brought up that it is put into their particular chapters in their particular code was texas in the texas occupation code 1001.301b says in short a person can't not use the word engineer in any type of variation if they are not licensed underneath this chapter so they can't use the title, they can use the name, representation, claim, assets, or means of, of advantage or benefit to using that term engineer. However, there is an exemption to this rule. So for the most part, just to give abbreviation, if you work for a private company that engage in engineering services, and pretty much you might not be the person who's the licensure professional engineer who's signing off. So it'd be someone else signing off on these things and saying that, hey, this we give the go ahead but you can call yourself on cover letters and business cards and stuff like that but as long as you're not providing to the public to perform engineering services and anything that exemption outside that scope um, of the business so like you're not providing engineering services outside the business saying that you're an engineer so yeah you have washington saying something similar as well but it's not as specific as the texas law yeah you know, puts it but for the most part if you saying that you're a professional engineer and you have all the license and stuff that you took such as the exams that say that you do have a pe or professional engineering license so it kind of makes me why these laws were set in place in the first place so one of the things that you know to look back on is the history and why things were like set in place um, i think it's very important to look back into the history because it kind of tells us why we are here at this present moment so why did texas in this particular case and maybe even other states as well put this and set in place saying that engineering should be a licensed profession and everyone cannot be called themselves engineer unless they go through the rigor of examinations the knowledge and the mathematics and the practicals in order to be a licensed engineer so let's look into the history of that if we look back on march 18 1937 there was an explosion that was caused by a natural gas leak that essentially destroyed the new england school in new england texas and united states there was a loss of 300 individuals individuals, kids, and teachers to this explosion. So shortly after the disaster, to reduce the damage of future leaks, the Texas State Legislature granted the Railroad Commission of Texas regulatory authority to prevent such incidents. This essentially enacted the Engineering Registration Act, which is now rewritten as the Texas Engineering Practice Act. So public pressure was put on the government to regulate the practice of engineering to facilitate installation of natural gases connection. You might think, all right, so this is dealing with natural gas. It had nothing to do with software engineering or software at all. Well, let me put in another instance that was recently in the past as well, but more of recent events, but this had to deal with a software failure. If we go back to March 10th, 2019, there was a plane crash that happened six minutes after the takeoff. It happened on a Boeing 737 MAX. It triggered the global grounding of the MAX and the worst crisis in Boeing history. And 2019 wasn't the first incident. There was another incident in October 2018 of a 737 MAX as well, operated by Lion Air. 
in Indonesia, in which 189 people were killed in that crash. So in both accidents, it saw uncontrollable nosedives of the aircraft before the plane crashed, which investigators have blamed on the model's anti-stall flight system, the Maneuver Characteristics Augmentation System, or MCAS. As told to reporters, the airplane's left angle of attack sensor failed immediately after takeoff, sending faulty data to the flight control system. The erroneous data entered trigger MCAS, which repeatedly pitched the nose down to the point the pilot lost control. Now you would think is that, all right, where, where software has to deal with this? You know, you're dealing with sensors and then you got a control system. And then within that quote control system, you have hardware. Hardware is run off of the software. So, you know, that's where it came into play. If either one of those sensors were reading into the data points and with one of the sensors saying that it had a different angle of attack than the other sensor, in that particular case, in these incidents, the one sensor override the other one saying that this was the proper reading that it was the angle of attack and the angle of attack should be pointed down because we're in a stall state. I mean, of course, you know, Boeing tried to save face with this for the most part, did the best they could with saving this, but the damage was already done. For the most part, they have updated their system and did a software update on the 737 MAX, but I mean, at that particular moment, the damage has been done, reputation has been tarnished on that particular model and possibly even on the brand. This is the reason why I think software engineering should be a, a licensure profession. This is why if you're dealing with like things of airplanes and pilots and things of building or things of underground and construction or piping or systems or gas or anything like that. This is really, really important to have someone who knows what they're doing and know the specifications that need to be done to ensure that everything is legit and everything is proper and everything is within specifications to be safe to the public ultimately at the end of the day. In short, and just to you know, sum up all of this, you can definitely call yourself a software engineer or a software developer. It's just the matter of fact is like, are you working for a company or are you working for yourself? The biggest part is like, yeah, if you're working for a company, you can call yourself a software engineer easily. If you have someone else who is a professional licensed software engineer or engineer in general, who's signing off on the practice of the delivery of this product, then you don't have to worry about that. You're just working on a licensed professional engineer. But if you are, you know, going to business for yourself or something, and you're saying you provide engineering service, you better know, you better have that license of being an engineer before you do that, because it will be some healthy fines. 3K per day, apparently. Just say, you're in software services or IT services or consulting. Just kidding, I am not a legal professional. Consult with your legal professionals. So after all of that, there is a difference and it should be a difference. It all comes down to public safety at the end of the day. If your software risks public safety, are you willing to accept the consequences or are you willing for a company or a licensed professional engineer to sign off? That's the question.